Are you sure you're okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm fine. As long as I'm with you, I'm fine. I love you, baby. How are we? I'm talking with the captain, right? And he uh -huh. says that we are clear for takeoff. So, I'm thinking to myself, you know what that means? Time for a little Bon Voyage toast, right? Champagne. That's right. Wow. This is going to be good. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going to get this last one here okay. for myself. Oh, baby. Are you beautiful? Thank you. And the poor the dude over there. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> to Los Angeles, you two, okay? To Los Angeles. All to right. a new life. Okay. Cheers. This is the start of our new life with you. Just me and you against the world. Just us. Yeah. Forever. Well, where have you been? Well, I had some business to attend to. Oh. I was hoping you'd run up to meet that girl who's got your head all turned around. No, I have not, but, um, but I did make another life decision. What's that? Well, you two are going to have a neighbor in L.A. I'm, uh, I'm going to move there myself. When you get to L.A., she's going to find somebody else, somebody that she thinks is better, and then she's going to dump you. You won't be with Chad forever, Whitney. Not if I have anything to do with it. Goodbyes are always hard. Yeah. Especially when you're saying goodbye to your best friend, you know? She's moving to L.A. Nice place. Yeah. Great weather. Yeah, I'm gonna miss her. It's only a few hours away by plane. Well, I, I, I do plan, you know, to visit, but, um, well, my life is here right now in harmony, you know, with my son and the man that I love. <clears throat> well, <laughs> maybe you can uh, all go out there and see her someday. Whitney can make all her dreams come true with the man that she loves. So can I. What, what, did you find anything yet? I'm pulling up the list of doctors right now. There's several hundred all over the world, and we have to find the exact right one. I hope whoever it is isn't in harmony. Well, if there was a specialist here in harmony, I think we would know them, wouldn't we? Well, yeah, yeah, of, of course, but... Oh, I just hope they're in Europe or somewhere so we can get Ethan and Gwen out of town and far away from Teresa. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I mean, who knows what that wench is up to, what kind of plot she's hatching to take Ethan away from my Gwenny. Oh, I've got to protect my little girl. And I've got to protect my son. Bingo. <gasps> you got it? It's exactly it's perfect. And we couldn't get Gwen and Ethan further away from Harmony and Teresa if we tried. <sighs> nurse, nurse, someone get in here. Wait, Ethan. What? It's all right. It's okay. The pain is gone now. Are you sure you don't want me to get Dr. Andrews? Yes, it's all right. I, I really don't even think this had anything to do with the baby. I, I haven't even eaten all day. <sighs> Gwen. Don't scare me like that, I'm okay? I'm sorry. <sighs> All right, look, I will check with the nurse and see if you can have something to eat. Okay. And I want to go check on Kay, too, if that's all right. See how she's doing. Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Promise? Of course. I will always be here for you. You're my wife. You are the mother of my baby. I will never abandon you. I promise. You 
You are the mother of my baby, and I won't abandon you. Ethan, do you mean it? I mean, what if mother is right? What if I lose this baby? Will you still stay with me then? Are you listening to me, Betty? Huh? The only thing that's going to keep Louise from searching this house is if he speaks to Sheridan personally. I know that. That's why I wanted her to call him and tell him that she was all right. So he would stop thinking she was kidnapped and he would stop searching for her. But that didn't work. Now, did it? Because Sheridan refused to, to cooperate. And do you know why? Huh? Missy, because she is not stupid like you are. I mean, telling her that she's making a local call. Now she knows she's still in harmony. Oh, oh. shut up, Mother. Oh. oh, now she knows that Louise is still looking for her. And when he finds her, you are going to jail. We're all going to jail. No, my plan is still going to work. How? How? How are you going to convince Louise that Sheridan is in Paris when she won't even call him? I agree. Look, Louise is a typical hard-headed cop. He's going to want some real evidence. Wait, wait. I got it. I know exactly how to get Louise to believe that Sheridan's okay. When I get out of here, I'll find whoever did this to me and make them wish they had never been born. If I ever get out of here... I need you. God, how I wish I were with you right now. My grandmother told me that when I met the perfect woman, it'd be like a phonograph in my head, playing my favorite song over and over. And that'd be so beautiful, so perfect, that I would never want the music to end. And there's only one way to make sure the music will never end. Sheridan Crane, will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Yes, Louise. I will marry you. Yes. I love you so much. I love you too. You're the love of my life. I can still hardly believe that you're here. That you finally came back to me. And I am here to stay with you. Mm. Mm. It's been the most romantic day of my life. So my plan is working. Mm, what plan? I plan to make every day I spend with you even more romantic than the last. I'm almost afraid to blink. So scared you'll be gone when I open my eyes. But this time, this time I'm never going away. Whoever's keeping me in this pit is insane if they think I will call Luis and tell him that I'm fine. I would rather die first. Well, that can be arranged, Sheridan. Trust me. Who are you? I know you're up there. I can hear you. Tell me what you want. Boy, Beth, you sure let up when she got that idea of hers. <laughs> Whatever it is. I wonder what she's got up her sleeve. Well, I'll find out soon, I guess. Soon isn't good enough for me. I need to know now. Make sure my daffy daughter isn't coming up with another crazy idea. Bethy, look, we need to know what you've got planned before you go charging down there half-cocked again. We could not have found a better place to send Gwen and Ethan. I was hoping it would be in Europe, but you know, this is great. I mean, you could not be any further away and still be in the continental United States. It's absolutely the best medical facility and doctor for Gwen's condition. <sighs> not to mention the shopping and the beaches. Oh, and the sunshine and the restaurants and... Mm, did I mention the shopping? It's perfect. Oh, especially since little Miss Teresita cannot afford to fly there anytime she wants. 
Gwen and Ethan will be safe and sound and far away from Teresa. I mean, I feel like we have won the lottery. <laughs> oh, let's go tell Gwenny that her problems are over. Ethan says he loves me. He does love me. Everything's gonna be okay. He won't turn his back on me. I know he won't. Unless... Oh, Gwen, I'm so terribly sorry. No, no, There wasn't no. anything that we can do. No, no. You lost the baby. Oh, my God. No, I'm so sorry. Maybe Gwen can't give you a baby, but I can, and I'm going to prove it to you. I can't lose this baby. I cannot lose this baby. Go to sleep, baby. When you wake up, we're going to be in L.A. Patience, Fox. Patience. Just let things run their course. Kissing? No. <laughs> At tennis. Winning two points in three games is better? And I know you gave me those two no, points. No, no, that's not true. That cross-court backhand hit the line that one time. You volleyed my lob into the net on purpose. Yeah, but your ground strokes are improving, so it's okay. My serve is still a mess. Oh. Not one thing. You've got it all, Whitney. You're as beautiful as you are good at tennis, and you're a wonderful singer. Just one thing I don't understand, though. What's that? How could you have given up tennis for a career in a dark, smoke-filled studio? You belong out here, in the full light of day, showing off your form, which is dynamite. I mean, if you'd stuck with tennis, you'd be a top seed in every tournament you entered. Setting a perfect example for young girls coming up through the ranks. Be perfect. You are to me. I'm just curious about you and tennis, that's all. I mean, it's obviously your first love, and you've been at it since you could hold a racket in your hand. Why on earth did you give it up? I, uh... Um... I, I, I don't know. Well, I do. My slut of a sister gave up tennis and broke our parents' hearts because of a man. A man that she stole from me. No. The I'm man not... that you are now dumping because you found somebody new. Somebody that is richer and more connected. Is that true, Whitney? You leaving me for another man? A richer man? Of course. Because Whitney is only out for one thing. Herself. She is nothing but a gold digger and a slut! What is it? Ethan? Oh, good, you're awake. What do you want, Mother? Uh-oh, she's in a bad mood. Well, our news will cheer her up. What news? We have found a way to save your marriage. What? Honey, it's okay. You don't have to pretend in front of Ivy. We all know what's going on, Gwen. 
We have to make certain that you carry this baby to term, because if you don't, you could lose Ethan to Teresa. I just got your message on my phone. What's wrong? Kay's gone into labor. What? It's, it's, it's too soon, isn't it? Yes. Was she okay? I, I don't know. Her water broke at her baby shower and they rushed her here in an ambulance. And now Eve says that she has no choice but to deliver the baby. God. McGill, he must be worried sick. Well, he's trying to be strong for Kay's sake, but I, I know he's terribly upset. Uh, where is he? I don't know. And Mia, wh wait, why weren't you at the shower? It's a long story. <laughs> the short version is I, I was at the Blue Note, and um, there was this fire, and I got dropped inside with Whitney Chad in the Fox. Oh, my goodness. I heard about that fire. I had no idea you were in it. Is everyone all right? Yeah. yeah no, my, my clothes got burned. I had a burn out from Whitney, but um, I'm fine, and everyone else is fine. So much sadness and sorrow for my children. Kay's baby and Miguel's baby is in danger. Luis still hasn't found Sheridan. And Antonio. He doesn't know that his wife is in love with someone else. His own brother. Now you. You almost get killed in a fire. And I'm in love with a man who's married to someone else. That is. Mama, I'm just... We have to have faith, Mama. Right? We have to have faith that it's all going to work. Yeah. Okay, what's this plan, Beth? Tell us. Spit it out! Yeah, it better be good. Not like the last one. <laughs> Telling Sharon to make a phone call. <laughs> you want to screw up that one. <laughs> hey, back off. Both of you, back off. I admit the phone call was a mistake. But this new plan... This is foolproof. Huh. Where have I heard that before? Shut up, Mother. Okay. Still, Beth, what's this foolproof plan you got? Mm. Voila! A tape recorder? Oh, very good, Mother. The mind may be going, but the eyesight's just as keen as ever. You're, you're gonna put Sheridan on tape? What? That's your plan? Yes. I'm going to ask her some questions and make sure that I get the words and responses that I can use, and I'm going to tape it all. Then I'm going to edit together a new tape that'll fool Louise into thinking that Sheridan's living the high life in Paris. Magnifique, no? <laughs> when I get out of here, I swear I am coming after you. I don't care how long it takes me. Do you hear me? Somebody help me! Help! Playing with tape recorders. I definitely think you're losing your mind, Betty. I have not. I've never thought more clearly in my life. And this little recorder is going to give me everything that I want. 20 years in the state pen, that's what it's going to give you. I'm just going to doctor the tape, and then Louise will be none the wiser. Of course you'll be wiser. He'll be wiser as all get out. You, you, you really have snapped. They're going to know that tape is a fake in a New York minute. Quicker than that. Uh. How? Oh, you have really got to watch more Law & Order episodes. <gasps> the cops can easily tell if an audio tape has been taken apart and then put back together again. All you're gonna do is make Luis more suspicious with that stupid tape of yours, and then he's never gonna stop searching for Sheridan. Yeah, yeah your, your old lady's right, Beth. We'll get caught for sure. Uh, you all right? I, um... I don't know, I just had this really upsetting dream. Really? What was it about? Um... It's, it's not important. <laughs> Was it scary? No, was it weird? Was it like, uh, were you walking down the street naked with everybody staring at you? Well, that's one of mine I could certainly do without. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything like that. Okay. Um, what was it about then? I mean, come on, it's better to talk about it. Okay, well, um, I was in California playing tennis with this man, and I had no idea who this man was. Really? Why? He 
flattered me, and um, I liked it, I guess. <laughs> I guess. So flattery will get you somewhere, then. But then suddenly Simone showed up, and she was calling me a slut and accusing me of abandoning Chad, mm -hmm. who was also there. Well, Chad was there. Yeah, and I felt horrible. I mean, he just looked so hurt. Yeah. Well, that's awful. Amen. I've asked the Lord for so many things over the years. That I think you must be tired of hearing my prayers. Never. Especially when we're praying for a birth of a baby. I, I, I wanted to go and see Paloma. And now, with Kay and Miguel's baby, I, I can't leave. We're going to be here for Miguel. And we're going to help him and Kay any way that we can. God, I'm so grateful that you're OK. You weren't hurt in that fire. No, well, luckily the fire department came in just in time, and, they, and Chief Pennant, he was there, too. Where are Whitney and Chad and Fox? Did they go home? No, Mama. They're moving to Los Angeles. Yeah, they just took the Crane private jet. I just came from the airport. Is that hard? Saying goodbye to Whitney, your best friend who's been with you for, through everything, really. And has helped you keep that head of yours on straight more than a few times. Yeah, she's always been there for me. Gail, Fox, and Chad have been good friends to me, too. I don't know about Fox. Why not? I don't think he can be trusted me, huh? He's like his parents, you know, they use people for their own purposes. But he's not like Julian and Ivy. He actually has art. In fact, he's in love with a girl in California. Miha, a oh. leopard never changes his spots. Maybe not. But love can change a person. For the better. You know what, my angel? After we make sure that Kay and Miguel's baby is okay, go to California. Spend some time with Whitney. Give yourself a change of scenery. Hmm? You can't leave her with me now, Mama. Come on. It's summer. And Ethan is going to want to spend time with little Ethan. He's going to want to take him to the playground. He's going to want to teach him how to dog paddle in the pool. And I've got to be there for that. You're staying because of Ethan? Please tell me you're not still trying to steal him away from Gwen. For the last time, Mother, I am not going to lose Ethan, and I am not going to lose this baby. Ethan loves me. Gwenny! I, I am sure that you and the baby are going to be just fine. Your mother and I just want to make sure that you have the very best medical care possible. And we have found it. The best doctor and medical facility in the country. And it's in Los Angeles. So is the doctor. Yes, yeah, so all you and Ethan have to do is pack your bags and get out there immediately. Well, it's easy to say, Mother, and, and I do. I, I appreciate all the trouble you and Ivy have gone through, but I don't know if Ethan and I can just pack up and leave Harmony. Of course you can. But I don't even feel like there's a reason to go now. I feel much better. If you value your marriage, you will be on the first plane headed west. Look, there are all kinds of reasons to go to Los Angeles. The first and most important is that you and your baby will have the best medical attention available. Plus, and this is a big plus, you'll get Ethan away from Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald. I mean, that little tramp has absolutely no reason to go to Los Angeles. So you and Ethan will have the privacy you need to cement your marriage without any interference from the little hot tamale. Our main concern is for you and the baby. And Dr. Abel really is the best in the field. So I agree with Rebecca. I think you and Ethan should pack a bag and get on the first flight to California. I am not going to California. I'm not trying to steal Ethan away from Gwen. But I am not going to be selfish and go off on a holiday if Ethan needs me here. Why should he need you, Teresa? 
Mama, he's going to need all of his friends if anything is to happen to Gwen or his baby. And besides, little Ethan needs a strong male influence in his life. Ethan needs to be with Gwen and his unborn child, not your son. Gwen is having a very difficult pregnancy, Teresa. I know that, Mama. And Ethan needs to be with her. Give her his undivided attention to help her get through this. But I do not plan on interfering with Ethan and Gwen. Well, forgive me if I don't believe that, Teresa. Now, for your sake and for Ethan's, just back off. Go to California. Spend time with Whitney. And maybe there you'll get your priorities straight. Mama, I, I, I don't want to argue with you, okay? But I belong here in harmony with Ethan. He's married to Gwen, Miha. For now. I thought you said you weren't trying to steal him away, huh? I'm not, Mama. I, I don't have to. He's going to come back to me on his own. It's fate. Mother, what are you and Rebecca trying to talk Gwen into? Honestly, Ethan, you make it sound like it's some sort of dreadful plot, and it's anything but. Rebecca and I are only concerned about Gwen's and your baby's welfare. Yes, so we did some research and found the best doctor and medical facility in the country that treats Gwen's condition. And he's in Los Angeles, and he has a wonderful record for bringing full-term healthy babies into the world. Yes, with mothers that have Gwen's condition. How's everything in here? Oh, Eve, thank goodness you're here. You could really help us. Okay, I only have a minute. He's in active labor. Well, have you ever heard of Dr. Abel in Los Angeles? Uh, yes, I, I, I've met him at a couple of medical conventions. I've heard him speak. He's probably the very best in his field. Why? Well, we want to place Gwen in his care and have her treated in California. Well, you can't do better than Abel. Well, see, that settles it. It would be downright irresponsible for us not to get Gwen out there immediately. No, my daughter needs this doctor and his treatment. If it's best for the baby, I'm ready. But it's, it's your decision. Do you want to go? What about your work? I can, I can do it from there. That's not a problem. Maybe Gwen can't give you a baby, but I can. And I'm going to prove it to you. Yes. Yes, uh, let's go to Los Angeles. Yeah. Then California. Here we come. Hey. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> so listen, um... Sorry about your dream. Your nightmare. Thanks. It just seems so real. Especially because of what Simone said when we were at the airport earlier. Mm. That once I got to California, I was going to dump Chad for somebody better. But I would never do that. I love Chad with all my heart. I wouldn't even look at another man. That's why I, I don't understand why I would dream something like that. Hey, look. I mean, uh, I wouldn't let the dream bother you. You know, it's obvious that whatever Simone said to you earlier at the airport put the idea in your head. I mean, I know you'd never, ever betray the man you love. Unless, I mean, unless, of course, Chad betray you first. Well, stupid is as stupid does and you have outdone yourself this time, you Betty. Do you never shut up, Mother. Look, the next time you get a hot idea, check with me first. You know what, Charlie? I don't need your permission to do anything. I thought we were a team, Beth. We are. Charlie, I... I, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you, okay? I'm just, I'm just upset. Things aren't going the way we planned. That's why you need to listen to me more. Now, look. Sheridan is not going to give you what you want, so forget about the audio tape. Wait a minute. I just got another idea, and this one is going to work like a charm. What is it? Who's there? 
Get ready for your close-up, honey. You're going to make a little teensy movie for Louise, telling him how happy you are in Paris. What are you talking about, a movie? That's right. I'm going to make a DVD, and I'm going to edit it to make it look like you're living it up in Gang Paris, and then I'm going to send it off to Louise. No! I wouldn't make a phone call. There's no way in hell I'll make a movie. Oh, well, I would rethink that. You don't starve to death. What? Yeah. If you don't cooperate, I'm not going to give you any privileges. What privileges? This is a hellhole! You shut up, or I'm going to cut off your prenatal vitamins. Well, where do you intend to film me? In this comfy, cozy little pit? I mean, do you really think that Luis would believe that I'm in a cafe in the Champs-Élysées or at the Eiffel Tower? You know, you really are insane. Chad betray me? He would never do that. No, of course he wouldn't. I mean, come on. I'm just saying that I can't see any other reason why you'd betray him. Can you? Uh, I could never hurt Chad. I love him. He means everything to me. Well, did something happen when I was washing up? Oh. What's wrong, Whitney? It's... it's nothing. Nothing at all. Come on now. It's me. I know when something's up with you. Um... I just... I had this dream. And in it, I was kissing another man. Well, another man? I'm so sorry. I... <laughs> hey, you know what? It's just a dream, okay? Don't worry about it. I don't even know where it came from. It's, it's, it's so silly. <laughs> you know what? I bet you were just subconsciously thinking about what Simone said back at the airport. Right. Wait, that's exactly what I said. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forget about it, okay? I know you would never betray me. Thank you for doing your homework and coming up with this doctor. Rebecca, mother, good job. Oh, anything for our darling. Can, can she travel anytime soon? Not only can she travel, but I think that the sooner you got out to California and got settled in, the better. And then all you'd have to do is just wait for the big event. Then I will pack us up and we will head out to L.A. right away. Okay. Teresa, I don't want you causing Ethan any trouble right now, please. He has enough on his mind with the baby and Gwen. Mama, I'm not going to do anything, okay? But I'm not going to lie to you and say that I don't love him and want him because I do and I always will. It's fate. F fate, right, and... I know. Fate. Well, if you are so convinced that fate means that you and Ethan will be together, then going to L.A. and spending time with Whitney won't make any difference, now will it? Ethan will still be here when you get back. And that way, he will have time to help his wife deliver a healthy baby. Now, please, don't interfere with the blessed event. Please, don't. We have nothing to worry about. Okay, it was just a dream, that's all. A dream. I know you would never leave me for another man. I trust you. And I will never look at another woman, I promise. So we have absolutely nothing to worry about. Well, you have quite a lot to worry about, pal. Going to Los Angeles is the right decision, Gwen. It's going to get you the very best possible care for your baby. Oh, and let us not forget that we'll also get you and Ethan away from that little home wrecker, Teresa. You're right, Mama. In my heart of hearts, and in my soul, I believe that somehow Ethan and I are going to end up together. So, it's not going to matter if I go to California now, 
or not. I, if you take care of little Ethan for me, I got, yeah, I'll, I'll go visit Whitney. Of course, I'll take care of my grandson. Well, uh, I mean, I've never been to the coast, and it's going to be fun, I guess. Oh, God. I'm so happy you took my advice. <laughs> Uh, Los Angeles. Yes, the uh, next available flight, please. And it has to be first class. My wife is pregnant, and she needs to be comfortable. I have no idea what Bevy is up to. But there's no way that Luis is going to fall for anything now unless he sees Sheridan with his own two eyes. You smile into the camera and say, Bonjour, Luis. I'm having a wonderful time here in Paris. Never. But no more food or water. I don't care. I won't do it. You better do it for your baby's sake. Oh, no. Baby. Yeah, that's right. If you don't cooperate, you and your baby are both going to die. Thanks. 